Okay, came out here today to work uh, work on my truck, but it's we got a thunderstorm come through, so. So I thought it'd be a good chance to talk about uh, the technique I'm gonna use to kind of restore this little hatchet here, this ax, this like boy's ax, you'd call it. Uh, I got this at a garage sale the other day for $3, as I did this one. No clue what brands they are. I, this is a true temper, actually. Not sure about this one yet until I clean it up. So, so this handle is, I really like the shape of it. I love to keep it. It's very dry and cracking a little bit, but it's within you know, that thunder. Definitely uh, reusable. Uh, it's very loose, as you can see there. Uh, I think it just got dried out. Here's what we're gonna do about it. We're gonna basically rehang this. So I'm gonna take this head, here's, here's a step. So take this head off with as little damage to the wood as possible. I'm gonna smooth the, the ridge where it was sitting off a little bit. And I'm gonna try to make this head sit just half an inch lower. And, um, and then we'll re-wedge this and uh, definitely get some oil in there. Uh, you know, really, if you just soak this in oil for a few days, I, like uh, linseed oil, I, it, it'd probably almost get tight. Toss in a step wedge in there and you'd be in business. So let's remove this handle. Try not to clamp the eye. That can, uh, you, you don't want to squeeze that eye down. So I'm gonna basically drill exactly where this wedge, it's a really skinny wedge, but I'm just gonna try to drill part of that wedge out. See that orange color? Okay, so let's take a look. We got our, kind of our wedge kind of drilled out there. Let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up. Um, let's get this rust off with the wire wheel and uh, we can get a much better look at it then. So I'll try this technique. I don't know about these, but Don't waste your time with these. Get one of these. Make sure it's secure. I uh, got this cleaned up. You can see it looks like a true temper. It's kind of worn out, but something NT edge. So, um, it, lo it looks nice. It really does. Uh, somebody, hopefully they didn't overheat it, but it looks like they really brought back that bevel, which I love. They really brought it back on that side. My goodness. That's farther than I would have even done it. You can see there. But it, it re this thing will be a really nice splitter because of that. Or, so, not a splitter. This thing will be a really nice uh, chopper. It'll really bite deep. Next thing we need to worry about is the handle. So this handle is in very poor shape. Um, this is an old axe, but that but it, you know, it, it looks like it's got varnish on it. They, now it probably came that way from the store, and this axe is pretty split. This it might be done, you know, really. But we're gonna try to save it, especially because I don't have another axe handle here right now. So, first thing I'm gonna do is strip this varnish off. So you know how we do it? We clamp it in the vise, take a sharp knife, and just scrape all this varnish off. We're doing that because we want to open up this grain. It's, it, it feels better in the hand, but we're also gonna open up all this grain so we can put oil on it and it really will suck that oil in, absorb it. And we might be able to revive this. You know, see, look at that. Kind of checking there. That, that's not good. But I like the shape of this, it looks nice. So, let's get to work. Okay, so let's clamp this thing in the smallest vise we can find. Okay. That just, just, this vice, this vice has zero clamping power. All right. This more knife, uh, it's like a chisel. This thing's awesome. Just scrape that off. Let's 
See how it chattered there at the, at the end? Go the other way. So I got some boiled linseed oil here. Pretty generous with this stuff. Put some wear gloves and uh, just kind of rub this in. And this is probably gonna absorb like instantly because it's so dry. Um, we're gonna let this really get the ends. This, you know, this might need to be repaired. I'm not sure. How I would repair this if I were going to would be to drill a hole and then put a dowel and glue a dowel, dowel rod in there. Okay, so let your oil sit in there for a few minutes like we have and then we're just kind of wipe off the excess. Because I'm gonna have it sitting deeper by a quarter inch or so, I'm gonna saw that kerf a quarter inch deeper than it was. Just, just to kind of let it, you know, set it, set it in there so it doesn't slip off. I'm, I usually use just that, an actual ball peen, but because this is kind of split, I'm gonna use a dead blow and just smack it and hit it pretty hard. Okay, you can see right now when we. I haven't trimmed this up or anything. When we started, this was the top of this uh, wood was flush with the top of this axe. And now we're proud, like a quarter of an inch or so. Um, we look at the fit all around. It looks pretty good. I mean, it looks real good. Now we need to lock that into place. We need to mushroom this head out. That's the key. Okay, in this case, I'm doing something a little weird. I actually put a little piece of filler material right there. It, just because I only have one wedge at the shop and I want to really want to get this hung. I might regret this decision. If you can get a wedge that fits. So now, now that your axe head is seated, clamp on the handle. Really well. With some leather or something in there. And then uh, hit, your, hit your wedge in. I actually know that that can go down a little more. I should have done this prior to this, but I'm gonna cut a little bit of this side wood off. And I can tell it's bottoming out. You're going for aggressiveness. Do you see? This is not the best job in the world, but you can see how that's flared out, right? Okay. Saw that off clean. Okay, so now I have a couple options for wedges. I like these circular wedges. Um, I got these two would go nicely together and I got this one. Um, because we're kind of lacking in material right up here, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use these two. Now, I don't like these two. I've tried to use them before and I just couldn't get them to, to go down in there, but um, I think I, I kind of sharpened them a little bit. So let's see if we can get one to go.
Don't go too far over. Make sure you get this part right. You don't want to end up with the wedge kind of creeping over and then you're trying to wedge against that steel and it's just not going to go in. Really drive these home. Drive it in. This one doesn't want to go anywhere. Clean it up a little bit if you want. So, okay, so here's here's kind of the quality level that I, I strive for. You see people really take their time and do this and do it artfully. And I like I like doing that from time to time. Um, but And then you see people doing it just, just quickly, but just wrong. And it's always coming loose. I did this one quickly. Uh, I didn't put a lot of art into it, but I did it correctly. I'm confident. This is mushroomed out. I kind of took the edge off with the file. But this is mushroomed out well um, past the, the head even. So you're getting even extra, and it's fully filling it out. Those two wedges really tighten this thing up. Yeah, they definitely took a wheel to that. You can see the where I'm sharpening it. Yeah, you can see that that's concave right there. I don't like that. It's not necessary. That side's a little better. We're actually getting pretty close to an edge, though. Sharp edge. Pretty much every time I come out here to the shop, um, I'm going to put this oil on this this particular axe, and then you know every every couple weeks I'll go do all my others, and then over the years, uh, you know, years later, I'll just have to do them every now and then. Okay, there we are. Uh, got our axe, we got it oiled, we got it hung, it's secure. Let's go test it. I'm just going to hit this on this uh, round and just see if it uh, see how it holds up. Definitely not a splitter, we know that. This is a good test though. You know, this handle is crooked. Can you see? It has a little bit of a bow in it. stringy wood. It happens. Overall, yeah, I mean, we're this is not a splitting axe. We all know that. This is this is pretty small, um, but it did test the durability of the hang. It's rock solid. It's going nowhere. It's going nowhere. It's in good shape still. This handle is definitely salvaged. I like this thing. It's pretty. 
Okay, so next time I come out to the shop and it's too stormy or too windy to really film anything, I'm gonna restore this other one. So I don't know why it was wrapped in tape. The handle's probably broken. Yeah, it's just crazy, with just a little bit of effort, you can, you can turn that into that, you know what I mean? And like, I love this, this handle is so nice. No. It's already drying up, that's crazy. I'm gonna put one more coat of oil on this before I go. Uh, I, I just like restoring these old axes. They're, and then they're usable. They're usable tools. It's a shame to, to let something like this go because this was just rusting in someone's garage and it would have kept rusting and pro probably eventually been tossed in the garbage. Ended up in the landfill or something. But I like the shape of these old handles. If this one will hold, hold uh, strong, I really like that. If you go to the store, let me show you. So I got two axes here. This is the one I just finished. This is that old True Temper Int Edge, something NT Edge. I don't know how old it is, but look at the shape of the the handle. Got that nice, whatever you call that, that bow in it right there. And then look at that nice like Fawn's foot. Look how it tapers out. Okay, just compare that to this. <laughs> It's almost embarrassing. This is a brand new handle. I got this from Ace Hardware not that long ago. I think I'd made a video. I really like the handle, but now that now that I hold this handle, and it's thinner too, uh, this is way better. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm gonna go hang this ax on the ax wall over there after I fondle it some more. Have a good one.